So my name is Tiffany Tichi, and I'm excited to just give you my experience as far as STEM and my passion for trying to get more representation in STEM. So what I'll do is I'll give a little introduction, you know, what is STEM? And then I'm really gonna pull that E out of it, but I'm gonna at least share some as far as some parts of it because I am a children's book author of the different STEM careers. And so definitely gonna share those, but I wanna at least give you some taste of engineering because that is what I do um, as a senior mechanical engineer. So just to give an introduction as been shared, I went to my undergrad at University of North Carolina at Charlotte, senior mechanical engineer. Um, so I became that because I went and got my undergrad in mechanical engineering. So then I decided, okay, I wanna go to grad school, right out of school. So I ended up doing my master's in engineering management. And from there, I was able to go into work um, and did an internship. And so from there, I started the journey as a mechanical engineer. And so where I work now is Westinghouse. Um, and so from there, I deal with, I've dealt um, with 19 years in the industry itself. And so the journey has been good with engineering. And now currently I am also back to school. I am a PhD student um, in the leadership studies program at North Carolina a and Agricultural and Technical State University. And so I'm planning on still tying in my STEM, the engineering, um, and seeing what the barriers are for Black women um, getting advanced into the C-suite. So those are some things I'm definitely looking into with my studies in leadership. So not only that, I'm active in various organizations uh, from Delta Sigma Theta Sorority to NSB, National Society of Black Engineers, um, the Lynx Incorporated. And then I've taken on various opportunities, but from this opportunity, I said, let me put it in writing. So I became a STEM children's book author. And so I've been able to generate various books. Uh, what can I be STEM careers from A to Z, as we talk about today, has then been able to then allow us to be able to create color and activity books to teachers editions, and then also have it translated in Spanish, French, Swahili, and Italian. And so the journey has been good to now I'm doing a series with the STEM Crew Kids Adventures, building a balloon power car. And so the sky's the limit. More, go to www.stemistheway.com and I'll bring that back again. But then you can get some free resources on 10 STEM scholarships and organizations that you can get. And so I've been a part of TEDx and I'll share some of that journey too of how I've been able to use the different platforms to share STEM is what I'm doing today with you guys. So as I've stated, you've seen that. And so I've been able to go to do a TEDx talk in the University of South Africa. It was an amazing experience. I was able to do my STEM talk, share how we need to get more into STEM. And so the sky's the limit on all the journey that I've been able to take on uh, from not only just being an author to a speaker to the platform of being an engineer as well. My why. Why did I decide that I wanted to go this way? As far as the route, as you can see, see that young girl? I was that young girl, <laughs> curious in school, uh, asking questions in math. And there was the challenges of, you know, wanting to make sure that I was able to get my voice heard and learn in the process. And so I didn't know I wanted to go into engineering, but initially wanted to be a lawyer because I thought I could debate. <laughs> and so from there, I learned about problem solving. My mom and my dad had me into a math, my brother and I, he's a civil engineer. And so we was in a math and science Saturday academy. And so from there, we saw how engineer can tie in with problem solving. And so I ended up going that route. And so that's what got me to there. And then my graduation, as you can see, I was actually a commencement speaker during my graduate when I was getting my graduate studies. And so from there, I was the sky's the limit, as you've seen from my journey. But my biggest piece is STEM representation. My passion is trying to get more into STEM. And so that is why I do what I do of trying to encourage more to get into STEM. So that is my why. That is why I decided to write the book, because when I was going to talk to the young people, a lot of them never met an engineer. And so I said, let me put it in writing. So that is why I decided to do what I'm doing. And so I've turned my book from my career into a children's book. And so that's what I've been able to share um, with what I'm doing today. So I at least wanted to give you my journey, my story of what I'm doing. I am an engineer, full-time engineer, and I'm also doing the business with the uh, author, being an author as well as a student is to get my PhD. And so the sky's the limit on the journey itself with my STEM background as well. Did you know, so now we're gonna go into some statistics. <laughs> Did you know that 76% of the students 11 to 17 years old do not know what engineers do for you for work? But we can probably go to the younger one. That's why I did my why. So at that age, look at that. As far as 20% of girls ages 15 to 16 have positive perspectives of jobs in engineering, 20%. That's 
that number is still low. We've got to increase the knowledge of it, especially with our girls and underrepresented as far as wanting to make sure that they're known and recognized as well to know what they can be as far as these careers. And feel free to ask any questions in the chat if you do have any, and we'll do questions and answers at the end, but I will see if I can monitor them as well. So what is STEM? If you don't know, and if you do know, that's awesome. But STEM, of course, all these acronyms, I will say with the industry I'm in, a lot of acronyms where you try to break them down, but STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. Science is the study of the understanding of the natural world because all that we do around here, STEM is a part of it. The technology refers to the tools and simple machines that make work easier. Engineering, that's what I do, is using tools to plan and design a solution to a problem. And then math, math is a study of understanding the shapes, the numbers, as well as the patterns, because we utilize all of this in STEM. STEM is, is all around us, real life. When we wake up, you definitely see STEM is part of it. So I definitely wanted to make sure you understood what STEM is, if you didn't know. And why is STEM careers important? Why is STEM education important? Because STEM graduates have transferable skills. That's the whole communications, being able to problem solve, being able to do that. And that's what a lot of employees are, are looking for as far as employers uh, for these type of skills. STEM workers enjoy premium wage. You can make some money <laughs> with many of these careers as well. But the, there is a, you know, something to think about when you talk about these careers. STEM workers is, is experience relatively low unemployment because there's so many unfulfilled careers as far as jobs in STEM that's out here that we could be taking advantage of if you knew that. And STEM jobs are often within innovative fields. So as you see, the different types of innovation, the problem solving, all of that is important. STEM workers are in demand across the globe. So globally, as we share today with all the all, all across the you know, world and everything, it, STEM is important and it's in high demand. So definitely think about that, okay? So I'm gonna show just real quick, if I can, a mini video, it's an animated video, but it gives a good perspective of it. So let me see, let me stop sharing and see if I can share it with some sound. All right, so hopefully you can hear this. Let's see. What is engineering? Let's take a moment to think about your morning. The alarm on your phone goes off at 7.03. You drag yourself to the shower and blast yourself with perfectly warm water in an attempt to wake up. You smear your toothbrush with too much toothpaste and scrub yourself into a foamy mess of minty freshness. You're running late, so you skate downtown, weaving through the commuters, dart across the road, barely making the lights and jump on the train just before the doors beep shut. There's a couple of stops to go, so you pull out your phone and play a few games of Angry Birds. Alarms, trains, traffic lights, video games, toothpaste, all these things were made possible by engineers. But what prompts an engineer to improve our world? Well, they solve problems. Problems are an engineer's inspiration and maths and science are the creative tools they use to solve them. Problems like making your alarm go off at the right time or making sure your toothpaste has just the right balance of chemicals to give you that perfect smile. Or even making a game so addictive it's almost impossible to put down, if that really is a problem. Now let's head over to the airport and jump on an aeroplane. Don't forget, you can fly! Before aeroplanes, flying was quite a bit more challenging. Every bit of your plane has been touched by engineers. A mechanical engineer designed the engine, a mechatronics engineer devised the controls. The fuel? Extracted by mining engineers and refined by chemical engineers. The navigation systems? Electrical and software engineers created those. Yep, a whole team of engineers. Now we've landed in Dubai, home of the Burj Khalifa. It's the world's tallest building at 829.8 metres high. It's also in one of the world's hottest environments, reaching up to 50 degrees in summer. One of the difficulties of building the Burj was trying to figure out how to set 45,000 cubic metres of reinforced concrete in such extreme weather. The solution? 
A clever method of pumping iced liquid concrete into the 55,000 ton steel frame during the night. The result? A building that's vertically over 800 metres high, rather than horizontally all over the ground. Now let's jump into our time machine and go back to Saturday. Saturday, March 1932. The Sydney Harbour Bridge is about to open. The bridge is a marvel of civil engineering and a pretty cool place to set off some fireworks. Since 1815, people had been talking about building a bridge to connect the two sides of the harbour. The problem was that the harbour was so incredibly wide. How could a bridge span such a width and support its own weight. The solution? The Romans! Well, actually it was an idea they came up with. The arched bridge works by transferring the weight into horizontal forces and bracing them at the ends of the arch. But what about the future? What problems will engineers solve next? Will we finally have affordable solar power? Or robots that can perform life-saving surgery? or a building that's so tall, your view is of outer space? Or, how about finally engineering a working hoverboard? Seriously, we've waited long enough. So, what is engineering? It's solving problems. It's taking crazy, out there ideas and seeing if they're actually possible. And when they are, the idea is shared with the world to make all our lives better. So, what problems do you want to solve? All right. So hopefully you was able to learn just a little bit more of how the different types of careers as far as engineering with STEM plays a role with. So what do engineers make? A lot of times we get to see what engineers make a lot of. And so from there, you saw the bridges, you saw the computers to now you see also the amputated leg. I mean, Engineers make so much as far as even tying in with STEM and everything from that end. So I was always asked that question, what does an engineer look like? I will say the ones, some of them do look like that. <laughs> I have worked with some that looks like that, but we are so diverse as far as being an engineer. And we have so many that's made history as far as with the field itself for the, ast you know, as far as astronauts, uh, Gillian Bluford and Mae Jamison's, their aerospace engineers, first black woman in and male to be able to travel into space. Uh, I don't know if many of y'all seen Hidden Figures. That's my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies. Definitely with Mary Jackson, as far as NASA, first black woman engineer. Um, then you have Lonnie Johnson, who made the Super Soaker. I don't know if many of y'all have heard that or seen that back in, but that is one day. So I just want to show things that we do. I can go and I can go to a power plant and I could go and dress out and wear safety goggles. I can wear uh, steel toe boots. I can wear a laboratory. It depends, but then I can go to the office and you know dress where I need to, as far as depending on where we work, but we are so diverse in, when it comes to engineering. Then we can go back to Africa where there's the pyramids. And I argue with my brother a lot, cause I'm like, well, civil, he's civil engineer, I'm mechanical. He's like, well, civil engineers were the first ever ones because we built them pyramids. And so I can't, can't contest with him on that, but say yes. And so this just gives me an idea of you know going back to the architect of pyramids and the history behind it as far as that as well. So what does engineers do? It's all about math and science and solving problems, as mentioned in there. Um, deciding that new products and discovery scientific is every day. Like I said, it's everywhere, every day. Just to give you a glimpse of what I do as far as what I've dealt with with the power industry, you see where it says control rods? I actually work in the plant where we make those you those uranium pellets that's in there with the red parts in there. And we start with the fuels and we put them into the control rods. Then we ship them out to the power plants. So from there, you see how it generates. It has the different equipment. And so for what I do with mechanical, is a lot of these equipment is what I deal with from the turbine to generating. So when you see the stacks with it coming out, it's not steam, it's not fire or anything coming out, smoke or anything. It's actually steam, which is water that's generated when it comes to it. So this just gives you an idea of how a power plant works um, and generates steam that goes then generates into the power plant lines that you have outside and then goes to the power that we have with the lights that we have as well so that just shows you how that works and i'm you know for the most part these are the different types of disciplines that you can see that we mentioned in there so many different ones i mean from aerospace to computer engineering electrical engineering civil engineering like it's, the sky's the limit on the different opportunities that are out there for different engineering the, the different 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 types include 
my mechanical engineering. <laughs> and then of course I did the engineering management, but mining engineering, naval energy engineering, so many different types in nuclear engineering to software engineer to ocean, the ocean engineer. So, but there are some main ones if you was to think about the different careers. One I mentioned, which I am representing is mechanical engineer. The reason I really decided to go into mechanical engineering is because anything that moves is mechanical engineering. And so I needed to visualize and see was because what I thought about with dealing with the type of engineering. I actually went in undecided engineer when I went to University of North Carolina, Charlotte. I didn't know what type, but then when I went to the class where they showed all the different ones, this was the one I decided on because I needed to visualize and see it. So machines that deal with working on machines and power producing as far as energy, and then also designing tools for the other engineers. So these just give you a good idea of mechanical from the rockets and everything to the engines, to even outside cranes that's out there. Then you have chemical engineers. You think about it, the chemistry, the science part of it. Chemical engineers, the, from medicine to the makeup, you can see that, you can see the lotions, like all of that has some chemistry in it. So chemical engineers are just as key as well as one of the type of engineers. Then we could go into the computer electrical engineering. So these are those things you cannot see from wires that's inside the computers. Of course, over here is the breadboard, which is the motherboard, they call it. Um, and so from there, you got computer hardwares, which deals with the chips, the keyboards, circuits, and wires, and all that, and software parts of things is dealing with computer and electrical engineering. And then, like I said, my brother's a civil engineer um, background, and so design, construction, and maintenance of roads, bridges, canals, dams, and bu buildings. Those are what civil engineers deal with. So we saw the bridges in the video and everything, too. That is a lot what civil engineers deal with as well. So sometimes people think, should I be an engineer? You think about it. And something to consider is, do you think about whether things work, how they work, as far as many things, the ways you can do ideas to try to solve the problems? Do you think of ways to you know, change and improve current things? Do you picture situations and analyze all the steps? So these are things to think about. You might be an engineer. You might be one of these STEM careers to think about. But when it comes to preparing for being an engineer, a lot of times it is all about having the strong academic as far as challenging courses. A lot of times everybody thinks it's just math and science, but let me tell you, yes, you have the math. A lot of times I had to take the you know, calculus, you know, pre-calculus and all that, the biology, the physics and the chemistry. But it's also important to know that English or writing, communication is key. Being able to know that if you can have the language to be able to share and communicate in general, it's gonna be key. It's not just about math and science. You gotta be able to display your research. How do you relay it? How can you present it? And so being able to know how to communicate is also important. Extracurricular activities, if you're in school, being able to manage not only just your schooling, but what other activities to be involved in is important. And then if there's opportunities for during the summer, doing some internships, go work under somebody who has that kind of career. And maybe job shadow, you can even job shadow just throughout. If you see somebody who has that career in STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, maybe go for a day. Can I go sit under you for a day? For example, if you have animals or pets, if you love animals, veterinarian, and I have that in the book, we'll go through that real quick of the other types of STEM careers. But if you thought about it, go sit under a veterinarian. If that's somebody you might want to you know, go as far as a career for. So job shadow is key doing some summer programs and um, hands-on activities, robotics programs. Those are some awesome ways to try to get that exposure to the different STEM careers. So I do wanna share if I can. And if you have some questions in the chat, please feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat because we are closing out for my portion. <laughs> and I wanna be, let, make sure I answer any questions, but I wanted to give you a good overview of the different careers. And a lot of times if you look at things and I'll just, go to, I'll stop sharing real quick so then you can just see me um, and where I show with my book, the various careers. So not only just the engineering, I went to astronaut, I went to where astronauts, you know, traveling to space. And so I'm showing various ways and methods for them to be able to see themselves in these different careers. There's so many different types of careers. So I decided not to just do engineering. I, um, with the STEM career, I wanted to do different STEM ones. So of course, with the science, you got the biology, uh, which is dealing with research and scientists. Like I said, my brother's a civil engineer. Doctor, electrical engineering, foresters, those that's out in the forest. Geologists, if you like rocks, 
I have geologists as one of the careers in STEM. And I just want you to think about all the different careers and opportunities that you could see yourself in, not only just representing just engineering, but there's other ones as well. If you love the water, you got hydrologists. Those are the movement, they study the movement of water. Then we let's go into the technology side of things. Let's talk about the information technologists. And those are ones that develop and implement computer hardware. So that talks about the hardware and the software that I talked about. Um, if you love airplanes, you got the jet engineering um, that deals with the building of the engines. Then here's a tough one. These are some tough words, but kinesiologists, I mean, they help with those that need some help with their body and movement to be able to heal. And then if you want to mix architecture and landscape, you got a landscape architect, um, which they design and beautify the outdoor areas. And then, of course, you go to my field, which is mechanical engineering. Um, mechanical engineers design, produce, and operate power producing machinery. And then nurse, of course, with science, orthodontist deals with the braces in the teeth, um, pediatrician, which deals with the kids. When you talk about a doctor, you talk about the kids and teenagers, they all go to a pediatrician. And then quality engineers, they go and make sure that everything's right where it needs to be. Robotics engineering. Robotics, they deal with the tasks and varieties. You can also tie in the mechanical side of it, then you can do the programming side of it. So once you do these type of things, you can think about going to do some robots, do some hands-on activities with it. Then we can go to math. You can't leave out the math, which is statistician. So from statisticians, they get to be able to collect and analyze the different data. And then transmission engineers, you saw those power lines that's out there. Utilities engineers, once again, that's dealing with the power lines that's out there. And remember I said, if you love animals, you wanna work with vet, as a veterinarian, this is another type of STEM career to think about. And so veterinarians deal with, you know, they're the doctors for the animals. And then going back to web developer, that's the technology part of STEM. And web developers deal with building websites and writing codes and working with software. X-rays, it's going back to the science thing. So X-ray technician. And then Y is the yacht designer. I had to come up with something for Y. <laughs> um, and so they help design the luxury boats as well. And then finally, Z is for zoologists. So zoologists, if you love the animals, not only with veterinarian, that's another option to definitely be scientists who help with the behavior of animals. And so I at least wanted to give you an overview, at least share a little bit of what engineering is, show the different types of STEM careers that's out there um, and know that you can be that as well. Or if you know some kids that want to be it, that's also um, an opportunity for them to get to know that those are some opportunities. And so I'll go back to sharing my screen real quick just to give you my info. And then I'll answer any questions that you have. Thank <laughs> you.